Hello and welcome to Let the Growth Flow, a spiritual place to heal mind, body, and soul. My name is Alexis and I'll be your host. My hope for this podcast is to help people learn about all things spiritual at the same time allowing themselves to heal in any way that they need to. I plan to do that by sharing my own spiritual experiences as well as bringing other spiritual mentors onto the show. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Let the Growth Flow. I am so appreciative of you listening right now, so thank you. I wanted to spend some time this week giving you guys a little update on life and sharing a couple stories. So I want to start by letting you all know that I most likely am not going to have a podcast episode next week on the, what day is next Thursday? On the 12th, because I will be out of town visiting family and I have decided to really disconnect for that week to be present and actually enjoy some vacation time. So you might still see some posts on Instagram. I am planning to still plan out some posts ahead of time, like the weekly tarot card reading that I do on Mondays. So just a heads up, I'm going to be a little MAA next week. I wanted to let you all know, but I will be back the following Thursday with an episode. So with that being said, I'm kind of feeling inspired today to talk about celebrating small successes and all successes and just celebrating in general. So I know for myself that it is really easy sometimes just for myself. I'm really great about pointing out the positives for everybody else, but we are our own worst critics and it's really easy for me to get in a spot of criticizing myself and not paying attention to the the small successes and I just, I really want to share that and this week i'm also holding my new moon circle um a couple days earlier than the actual night or day of the new moon because i will be out of town and i wanted to hold it while i was in my own like safe space (laughs) and i thought about not hosting it at all this this month because i was like i think i do need a break and maybe i just need to embrace the fact that i'm going to be gone but i was looking back at my goals for 2021 And one of my goals was to host this new moon circle every single month for the entirety of this year. And just looking back at my goals in general, I'm pretty happy with with where we're at, Um, which was fun. I should have done like a half year checkup on my goals, see where we're at, which maybe we'll do that today. Let's see where this episode takes us. But What I wanted to say is celebrating these small successes with life. So you guys, I have to share with you that I did the new moon circle in January and I actually had to end up canceling it last minute because I had family things going on, like life was happening. And then February, March, and April, I, so that was three months February and March, I, I excuse me, I held it two months and people, a couple people signed up and then they forgot about it and didn't show up. So I actually had nobody come and I was super sad at those times. And I told myself, you know what, it's fine. And I would still kind of go through the process of what I had planned so I could still practice that. And then April was the first one that I held and I think I had six women show up and I was beyond excited. I was so nervous, but six women showed up. And I remember telling myself, and I learned this from a friend too, a little bit about surrendering and just letting things happen. It's like I told myself no matter if one person, zero people, all 20 people show up, I'm still going to host this meeting. So just surrendering and 
leaning into whatever the hell happens, happens, and it's meant to happen for a reason. But I also just look back and even to April to now and how much stronger the new moon circles have got for myself. And it just gives me this sense of pride and passion because I look back at how nervous I was and I was stumbling over my words because I just wanted it to be so good. Like this was my dream, big part of my dream, like getting women together, sitting in the divine feminine energy and harnessing it and setting our goals and intentions and just lifting each other up, supporting one another. And I look back to that meeting in April and then I look back to last month's, the one in Cancer, and it was It's just the growth that is happening. It blows my mind and I'm so grateful for it. And I'm so grateful for all the lessons that I'm learning along the way. And just the growth. Literally, I'm covered in chill saying that because the name of this podcast is Let the Growth Flow. And the growth that has flowed for me since starting this has been huge. So I appreciate you guys as always just listening and being a part of that and hopefully growing through this too. So that is my encouragement for you all to celebrate the small successes. So the next thing I kind of want to share about is my mediumship development course. So six weeks ago now, I had mentioned on the podcast that I was starting a mediumship development course with Squamish Medium. I was so excited. Like I wanted to do this class for a year now and it just didn't line up the last time. And it just kind of fell into my lap this time around and I couldn't pass it up. There's just something nagging inside of me where it's like, you have to do this. You have to do this. This is the right step right now. Oh, and I'm getting emotional and I'm covered in chills because I'm honestly... I'm sad that it's over, but I also know that it's not like a goodbye to development, mediumship development, and especially working with Squamish Medium. I definitely, definitely want to work with her again, and I strongly suggest anybody to work with her. She's an amazing, phenomenal teacher, Um, so wise and so vulnerable and encouraging. She never puts anybody in a box. She encourages you to be yourself 100%, which is so amazing to find in a teacher. But I kind of wanted to talk about these practice readings that we do for this this course. So it was six weeks long and each week we were paired up with two other women from the group to do practice medium readings. And I love that we were thrown in to do this the very first week because it's intimidating. And the other thing to know is that People in this course are at all different development levels. So we had people in this class who were interested in intuition and mediumship, and they just wanted to learn more, and they've never even gone to a medium reading or maybe have never even tried to give a reading themselves. And on the other end, we have people who have been mediums for years, and they this is their next development step to just learn more. So it was really a intense, crazy experience just to, and humbling too, just to be a part of that, the dynamics, to be, I'm getting so emotional talking about this, um, to be a part of helping people grow on all levels. I, it was just so beautiful and I feel so grateful and I know that through these practice readings, not only did we help one another grow our mediumship development and like how to deliver good messages, but we also changed each other's lives through the messages that we were able to deliver for one another. So I did want to share a couple of my experiences through these practice readings for myself and the readings that I gave. So I'm gonna flip back in my journal here and read some of these notes, which is also making me realize I want to go back through and read all of these and all my journal entries during this six-week period. I've also been learning that what, before I get into 
the readings I've also been learning through this that basically what we go through in our life is what mm -hmm. we are, like attract or draw to us cliently, if that's making sense. So for example, my father is an alcoholic and you guys know I've shared on this before, I've had sexual assault happen in my life. So most commonly I attract people to Reiki and medium readings who have alcoholics in their life or who have experienced sexual assault. So it's really interesting just the way things come through. And like, as I continue to go through life and quite frankly, shitty things happen, the one thing that gets me through it is knowing that I am learning a lesson from this and I am going through this really hard, tough time so that in return, I can help other people going through these hard times. I can't even say like favorite reading because we had so many beautiful, beautiful, beautiful readings. So I am going to read notes from a reading that I received and this was back on June 28th. And then after I received this reading, it encouraged me to come out of the spiritual closet, so to speak. I think most people had kind of an idea of what I did, but I wasn't super open about it all the time. Like I still felt like I was hiding it because there was that fear of judgment and the people wouldn't understand. And I had this medium reading with this woman and she brought through my great grandmother. And for reference, I've had three people in my life pass and my great-grandmother was probably the one I was closest with who was passed. So she always comes through first. She always comes through the strongest. And she had Alzheimer's and dementia. And this woman was able to pull through th that there was a grandmother, a great-grandmother coming through from my mother's side that was expressing depression and anxiety and unhappiness towards the end. Um, especially like she wanted to say ambulatory issues and that there was a freedom taken away from her and she was bitter because things were taken away from her and she wasn't ready for that. Um, it was very frustrating because she was like a strong communicator. Um, and this was huge. You guys, my great grandmother had this big old green car and it, she loved her car. She would drive it. It just, her car was her love. And she came through saying that she missed her car and that the last straw for her was when the family had taken her car away from her because it wasn't safe for her to drive anymore. She kind of thought, what is, what is there to live for anymore? Um, so this was all coming through, but just giving you kind of you guys an idea of like the evidence and the details that can come up during medium readings. And, um, my great grandmother was apologizing because she was unhappy towards the end and she said sorry because she would like say or do mean things when like we would try to move her and she said that she could like see re reactions on people's faces but just didn't know how to say sorry at that point she would just not talk she was thank you, saying thank you for the pain relief and medicine and my great grandmother was a, a great cook, like a really good homemaker. And she just was saying, I want to make cookies and brownies and cook for my family again. And she was really good at it. Um, so that was just coming through. And then there was so much more, but I'm kind of just sharing these big things. And then she was coming through. And the interesting thing is I had more like 14 practice readings during this time because I did a couple, maybe even 16, because I did a couple extra ones. Um, there was always women who wanted to do more. So we would kind of just pair up outside of the, the two groups, two pairings that we had for that week. And it, it amazes me because these women are complete strangers until we do the practice readings together. And that is the true magic of mediumship and the confirmation that we can get that there's another side. But I, Every single reading I had, my great grandmother comes through first and she comes through the strongest and every single person describes the feeling of love that she sends to me in the same way. They say, she is sending you so much love and so much support. She's like pouring love onto you. And like the women reading for me would get emotional at this because they're like, it's so much love. Like, I just wish you could feel it. And I'm like, I can. <laughs> but uh, it, it's truly beautiful. So my, these messages really stuck out to me. She was saying, she's sending so much love to me and she's opened herself up and she's pouring love onto me and she wants me to share this love. 
She said, you need to believe in yourself more. Stop doubting it. She said, look at yourself now compared to when you were a young girl, even to just a couple weeks ago. And she said, look at what you have created. You're on the right path. You need to follow, excuse my language, the fucking feeling. I was bawling my eyes out during this because this came up during a time (laughs) that I was really struggling. I know probably any business owner out there can relate to wondering if you're doing the right thing, if you're on the right path, especially when there's hard times. And I have a couple girlfriends that, and boyfriends that run their own businesses. And the hardest thing I think about running your own business is you are your own support team. And when the highs come, the highs are really high. And when the lows come, they can be really low because you are your own support team. You are the person that has to be positive and work yourself out of it. Like nobody else is coming to say, it's okay. Here's what we can do now while things are slow. So to get those messages during a time that I was so down was incredible. And then this is when I started seeing so many things about trusting and believing and hope and faith. And I know I've said this quote so many times, but I literally have it like on my wall on a sticky note above my desk so I can look at it every single day. The soul needs hope and faith like the body needs air to breathe. And I just try to read it every single morning because it is easy to focus on the negatives and we have to focus on what brings us joy and have that hope and faith. So that was beautiful. And then I did want to share some stories that I of stories of me reading for other people. So I am truly terrible at trying to write down notes while I am reading. Uh, I'm something I'm working on because I want to be able to go through afterwards and like check mark or highlight the things that I got correct and like got strong confirmation on. But I've been recording sessions so that I can go back and like just watch them instead and listen. And I think it's good too because I'm learning what to change and what not to change. But um, it's been really beautiful and I've been able to start discerning when loved ones are coming through and when your highest self is coming through where it's like soul information for the sitter, where it's like your soul is coming through to give your own self messages if that makes sense and that's been really beautiful and honestly it's I can't say one is better than the other because they're all amazing but one bit of information that I did want to share from a reading is I was giving a reading to a woman and I I was like did somebody pass in a car accident I'm like I keep seeing a car and it's like a white car and I'm like so vividly seeing like those white fuzzy dice hanging from the mirror. Um, and I kept seeing the number six. And so this is how information can come through sometimes in medium readings at the first bit. It's kind of spotty. It's like I'm getting seriously just random things and I'm just going to tell you what I'm seeing. But this woman couldn't relate to that information. She was like, I have, don't have anybody who's passed in a car accident, um, especially like white dice and a six and all these different things. And I'm like, okay, well just take notes, maybe like ask family members because sometimes stuff will come through that you don't know. And there's also times I've had plenty of medium readings now in my life. And sometimes we get like deer in the headlights. Like we hear information and we're like, Um, I don't know, like, I can't think of anything that would match that. But as soon as the medium reading's done, or like the next day, I'm like, oh my God, what the heck? For example, like my great grandmother's name was Mary. And one of the first times I got a medium reading, they're like, I have a grandmother for you. And her name's Mary. And I'm like, my great grandmother's name wasn't Mary. We called her Essie. So (laughs) my brain was thinking Essie only. It was like one track mind. And then the next morning, I'm like, Jesus, my grandmother, great grandmother's name was Mary. What am I thinking? So that's why I always encourage people to write stuff down. But this woman messaged me about a week later. We had our medium reading on a Friday and she said, the information you pulled through about the car and the white dice and the six was psychic information. And it was for my son. She was like, my son was in a really bad car accident. And 
you were spot on with the description of the car down to the white dice hanging on the mirror. And she was like, it's a true miracle that my son lived. So that was crazy for me. I'm covered in chills just saying it again because I was just intense to have somebody tell you that and have it be that specific of information. And psychic information is sometimes difficult. I don't like to always give psychic information. I always ask for consent first if people want it, and I usually only give it if it's good advice. Um, I'm a firm believer that nobody needs to be hearing negative things that can happen in their life coming in the future, and the truth of the matter also is psychic information can change at any point. Like, everything in life is choices. So one choice made differently can change the outcome of anything that happens in the future. But I, it is interesting the way that that psychic information came up in the reading compared to other times, because there's usually a clear distinction of, I can tell this is not happened yet. So I am still discerning and learning how to tell psychic information from crossed over loved ones information, but it's all a learning process. One of my other favorite readings was with this woman. Um, I'm not sharing names because it's personal information, but we, I like to start my sessions by having the sitter and myself close my eyes. And I kind of lead us through this like little guided, quick guided, like, meditation of us breathing and like opening our heart chakras and sending our energy to one another and just kind of blending our auras and our energy because that's how I begin to invite your loved ones in by connecting with your energy and as soon as we closed our eyes it was like our souls immediately connected it's like I saw two hands clasping each other and they were building a bridge and I was covered in chills and the most beautiful thing afterward is is that this woman said she saw the exact same thing. And we had such a beautiful reading. I, The true magic of medium readings too is like the way that you get the information too. It's like, so I was getting like flower. I was seeing flowers and I was like, there's so many flowers. And I'm like, I can't even de- describe how many flowers I'm seeing, but it's like strong encouragement to be around flowers for you. And, um, I just, I kept telling this girl, I'm like, the the sense that I'm getting and like the picture that I'm getting in my mind is like a piece of yarn that's frayed at the end and it's all like like sprayed out and I can't, what's the word I'm looking for? (laughs) It's all frazzled at the end. I don't know. And you can't, it's like you're going in 10 million different directions and this has to do with family. And it's like, you need to know that you can literally like take a lighter and light all those edges and make your string straight again. You don't have to be dealing with all of this and being around all this noise. And it's like your guides are really sending the message of F the noise, focus on what makes you happy. And like I'm saying, there's just so much more in that reading, but it was amazing. Uh, the stuff that was coming through, I just, I kept seeing a deer and I was like, I, and I told her that I'm like, I keep seeing a deer, but I know it's a doe. I'm like, it's not a male deer. It's specifically a doe. And it's just like, its eyes are just looking. And I also always ask my sitters not to give any information until the end of a reading (laughs) because, um, I like to see like what I can pull through. And I think in the long run, it makes it more magical for the sitters too, because you know that that's all confirmation coming from the other side because I don't know anything. (laughs) And then I always ask for like the confirmation and what makes sense at the end. So it's really fascinating because when this woman started telling me she had a lot going on with her family and she felt like she needed to be a part of it and like just making things be okay. And there's lots of, there's just lots of family things going on. And that was coming up with the frayed ends or she's like, that's how I feel I've been feeling. And this, this is so crazy. She, she was like the doe. She was like the day that my grandfather died, a doe came and laid in our front yard and just laid there and wouldn't leave. And my mom went outside and like laid with the deer and cuddled with the deer. So anytime we see a doe, we think of my grandfather and 
the flowers she actually like takes pictures of flowers and wants to make a tarot card deck with flowers so she was like flowers are a huge part of my life and she was like photography and like taking pictures of flowers is what lights me up and I haven't been doing it so it's truly beautiful and it makes me realize how small details can be huge details at the same time like if I wouldn't have just said I keep seeing a female deer that was a connection for this woman that her grandfather was with us and confirmation that yeah seeing a deer is your grandpa like it's a sign from your loved one so those are kind of the stories i wanted to share today i just want to remind you all to go out and celebrate every small success that you have in your life and scream it from the rooftops scream it for yourself scream it to your friends scream it to your family my favorite is dancing let that energy flow through your chakras and dance that excited giddiness of when you have something light you up celebrate you and your success so i am going to pull a card for us from the spirit animal oracle by colette baron reed of course Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so the card we got is Frog Spirit, Clear Out the Clutter. I feel like this goes hand in hand with that message again of fuck the noise. Um, and as I was shuffling, I have chills. My my roommate literally giggles every time I say it. I'm covered in chills because I say it about 10 million times a week. And she just laughs every time. She's like, you need to get that tattooed on you somewhere. Just covered in chills. <laughs> But when I'm covered in chills, it's confirmation for me of spirit and the messages that are coming through. But as I was shuffling this deck, I kept thinking about how I wanted to just say, really tap and hone into what makes you guys happy. I know for myself, the past two weeks have been kind of difficult for different reasons for myself than I'm sure everybody else. But I keep finding again and again that when... I'm going through something. There's so many other people going through something similar as the collective. And when we get in those times of sadness and depression and honestly, like a sense of lostness and we don't do what makes us happy, I just encourage you guys to dig into your toolbox of self-care and start by just doing the things that make you feel good. I know it sounds like such a simple step, but it can be so hard. But clear that clutter out of noise of the things that you do that don't make you happy. Only be doing things that make you happy. Okay, let's read the definition from the book. Frog spirit, clear out the clutter. Frog spirit knows that while all the other frogs are croaking away, this is a time for you to simplify and declutter your life so you can feel content on your own lily pad. Even when life isn't creating a total cacophony, we can become drawn to the excitement of lots of noise. Then, the next thing we know, our schedules and homes are cluttered with commitments we regret making and objects taking up valuable space. Even relationships need decluttering, as they often become messy. Frog Spirit appears to tell you to clean house, prioritize what you need, and get rid of or give away the rest, so you can have some space in your day and in your head. You don't need the old stuff and its stories shouting at you about the past. Along with physical clutter, friendships are sometimes kept longer past their expiration date, weighing you down with unnecessary baggage. Now is the time to let go. Whatever you need will appear when you need it. So release your grip on all that clutter that is making you feel anxious or burdened. Frog Spirit wants you to reclaim your space, unencumbered by by shoulds, oughts, and could-have-beens. Let go and jump. You are free from all of that old stuff. Beautiful. My favorite, favorite part of that is even when life isn't creating a total cacophony, we can become drawn to the excitement of lots of noise. A couple weeks ago, I had a guest on the show talking about ego. And one of the things our ego loves is to distract us by the drama and the things going bad in our life to keep us safe. (laughs) So definitely clear out that space and try not to let yourself get distracted by the bad things. It's easier to do that. It's harder. 
to keep a positive mind and keep going. Clear out that clutter, my friends. Let's get it going. I feel like the last two weeks have been heavy, and I have faith that the next couple weeks to come, the month of August, is going to be really great. So I love you all. Channel your inner frog spirit. Clear out that clutter. Thank you so much for listening. As always, I ask you to share the podcast on social media, share it with your friends uh, if you like it, because it is the best way to help the show grow and helps me reach more people and to help them let the growth flow for them. (laughs) If you would like to book a medium reading, a Reiki session, or an intuitive tarot card reading, you can do that on my website, alexiseastintuitivehealing.com, and you can follow me at Alexis East Healing on Instagram. You can always use the link in the Insta bio to sign up for all the things going on also. Thank you so, so much. Have a wonderful week, and let the growth flow. Until next week, bye.